be able to introduce Jasper, my good friend and artist. Um, uh, we invited Jasper by the fund from here and there, but mostly the, uh, the cause of invitation of Jasper is for the exhibition Designing Connection and Friction taking place at Harcourt House Artist Run Center in downtown Edmonton. That was an exhibition that we, um, Art and Design Graduate Student Association, put together. So uh, it's taking place until the Sunday, um, that's during 2018 Edmonton Culture Days. So please come and see if you haven't checked it out yet. Um, so let me just read his bio. Jesper Alve received his artistic training mainly in Prague, New York City, and Kita Kyushu in Japan. Currently, he's a PhD candidate at the Academy of Fine Arts in Prague, Czech Republic. During 2013 to 16, he was a research fellow at the Oslo National Academy of Arts with the project titled Work Work, staging dislocation in artistic and non-artistic labor. In addition to showing his art as a number of international exhibitions, Alve has also participated in numerous study, residence, and research programs both in Norway and abroad. His most recent exhibitions include Immune Nations at UNAIDS Geneva in 2017, Making Use Life in Post-Artistic Times at Museum of Modern Art Warsaw in 2016, Mother, Dear Mother at Kunst Nerns Haus Oslo, maybe, in 2014, Oh, it's a German now. Ar Arbeit Stiet Work Time, if it's not German. Heine, Heine Ostad Kunst Center in 2013, as well as several exhibitions held in collaboration with Isabella Krosova, Theater of Static Object, Disto O2 PAF. Oh my god, I have to skip this, some name of galleries. Sorry, I'm not prone to European languages, sorry. Um, maybe yes, we can introduce this later. And um, lastly, Activum in Oslo, Eventos Parallelos, Manifesta 8 in Murcia, Figure and Ground, Berkir Sutsuki Contemporary Art Gallery in Krakow in 2007. Thank you everyone, and please welcome Jasper with a big round of applause. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, this presentation will focus mainly on the work which was mentioned, which is now exhibited at the Harcourt House for another day, I think last few days. And I was invited to talk about this work in particular and um, relating that to the, the curatorial designing connection and friction concept. So I'll try to, to talk out from that position, which is already contextualized here. The presentation will highlight some aspects of this work, uh, which is called Upstream the Cold Chain. But rather than looking at the final outcome um, of the film, because it's a video being shown, this uh, presentation will include additional images and a few videos and comments around. Like, besides Upstream being a cold. Uh, Upstream the cold chain being a film, it's important to consider upstream the cold chain as an experiment in setting up a series of guest and host situations. So what you see in the image here is the uh, first presentation of this project. It was uh, in Trondheim, Norway, in the context of the GlobeVac uh, conference, a big conference, international conference on international access to global health. So it was people from different parts of the world and it was the first presentation of Upstream, the cold chain. And as you see, it's not, uh, it's not an important uh, image in terms of how it's installed or it's, it's, it's not so important how it's installed, that's what I'm trying to say. That it's a video, it's there, you can see it, it's kind of a proof of existence of the project. And that you will see in several of the images that it's not so much an aesthetic, which is in formalized term in the work, but more a conceptual reference um, so we will see how a particular artistic approach, which is my artistic practice, uh, unfold within the certain public health context in Norway, in Burkina Faso, in Nyasa province in Mozambique, and in Geneva and Switzerland. 
So we have four guest host situations in this project, which was developed in the context of a bigger vaccine project, which I'll return to and talk more about later. First, um, I'll say a few words about the cold chain. So upstream the cold chain. So cold chain is a temperate chain and it's cold because it's refri refrigerated. So if you order a pizza, it's a warm chain. You expect it to be warm when it's delivered at you at the door. And cold chain is the opposite. So vaccines in particular, in this case, needs to be cold to keep their potency as vaccines. So that's a challenge, of course, when you move to countries with poor infrastructure. So this project is about this difference of uh, infrastructure or the rich and the poor and the travel of the cold stream is normally from a wealthy country or wealthy region to a within a wealthy region, but also to a poor region. So upstream is to try to work with those end users communities, which are health practitioners in for example, then in Mozambique, in Yasa province, or outside in uh, Burkina Faso, Ouagadougou in, in Sinai. So the first situation, in short, is uh, doing a workshop with cold chain uh, operators in Ouagadougou in Burkina Faso. That's a French, earlier French colony. Then there is bringing a doctor from Yasa province to Norway for that conference where this was shown as well. Then there is a number three workshop with cold chain operation in Lichinga in Mozambique. And fourth is an exhibition in Geneva at the UNAIDS in relation to the UNWHO summit. So there are two focuses, I think, in this uh, presentation. One is on the location of the artwork, as we know it. Thinking from a common, if we think about common classical trinity of the maker of the artwork, the object being made, the artwork, and the audience. So historically, you can trace this to the, the artist, the artwork, the audience, or God, Earth, human. So you can keep in mind, like, where is the work located? So as I mentioned, the work is there in the video, but it's also, which you don't see, is a visitor coming through this project to spend time in the conference, which would not normally be there. Uh, reconsidering these constellations and borders around and looking how they influ influence each other directly or indirectly, testing to place the work as a lived experience. So the work, if you ask about location, maybe it's happening in that guest or the host more than in the video. So the exhibition here, it's maybe more as a means to realize, realize another project or as an alibi to do it. And the second focus might be um, uh, motivation to make the work. There is, in most cases, an initial call, invitation to make a, make a work, and then there's a response which becomes then the work. So this is also, as you will see, a different, could be interesting to look at if you see back. Uh, in the case of Upstream, the cold chain, there was already a vaccine-related project inviting artists. There was already a consortium with scientists, doctors, epidemiologists, and different people to create an interdisciplinary atmosphere to create new works. So this is the acceptance of this framework to say, okay, I will try, we'll work together, and then develop this work as a reaction to that or as an opportunity in that context. There's, of course, with that, the science and art, which is on a different higher level, that there are resources to work with artists in the scientific context. So that's another call and answer, that this project was enabled within the vaccine project. And then you have the globeback, the UN summit, the UN AIDS, the Homer guests, and you will see that there is all this call and response throughout the presentation. So the first image, uh, I talked about the cold chain. Um, you'll see the same work installed here. Uh, by the end of the project here, you see in the image the Norwegian partner. He's working in the public health. Yuan Holst and Therese Sinage. She was coming from Burkina Faso to present the work and to be part of the uh, activities we had in Geneva as the last kind of exhibition. And you see the work installed in the background. Similar on the screen with head headphones. 
here's the work uh, installed in Edmonton, in the Harcourt House. And added, uh, as you see, are some images uh, of uh, different uh, um, elements which is not in the video. So uh, there are some small comments. I'll return to that a bit later on. It's, it's basically showing the, the people involved and the private side, maybe a more private side of the project, which then becomes uh, relevant for the, uh, the friction elements. Or I thought it might be helpful to show and explain just a few projects which I have been working on earlier, so you get the sense of where this kind of dislocation is coming from. And very often um, I put, or we put uh, a lot of the material on the web page. So here's just like a picture of the web page, and if somebody's interested, you can ask me. I'm not opening the web pages or showing anything. It's just to show that it exists. And I'll just trace the kind of main motivation and location. So this is one project from uh, 2006. It's 2006 is called the uh, Transcultura Act One. It's from uh, Moravian Gallery, but it was based on a, um, a bigger journey outside the European Union when it, it was enlarged in 2006. So lots of Central European countries were added to the existing Union. And we made uh, a journey outside uh, the rim, which means like North Africa and the Middle East and, and Russia, White Russia, Ukraine. So um, from this uh, first part of the journey, um, a group of people, uh, actually one person from Morocco, one person from Algeria, one person from Tunis, one from Libya and one from Egypt, were invited to the city of Burkina, which is the second biggest city of Czech Republic. And we managed to, to create this kind of guest host situation in addition to showing the objects in the state collection in Czech Republic, which has objects from the same geographical location parts. So North African objects in the collection of the state with focus on the provenance. So this is all about that. But you see, there is already this relocation of people, bringing them in, creating a guest host. I'll, um, this is called figuring ground. It's uh, bringing objects from that same journey and relocating those objects in the Polish context and having experts from Poland talking about, for example, the lettuce or people selling stuff on the road. And these are kind of expert comments on those objects. So again, it was a similar topic about what can travel and what cannot travel. So you probably know in, in the European context, it's a big discussion. And this was just the beginning. These two images are from a project called Representing the Nation, sorry, which was imitation by the National Gallery in Prague to, to, um, to make a contribution to the triennial, triennial they were organizing. So this is an interview with all the directors in the whole national system of galleries for the publication, which was then modified a bit. Here is a series, another work called uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's uh, 42 interviews with unemployed. Well, employing the unemployed for a day and talking about work experience. And um, here's an example of the, uh, the work where the audience is, uh, is coming in and uh, the first part of the exhibition is if, um, if they, they need to make a drawing of their hand. So there's some equipment, they can make a drawing of the hand, they, can, they have to accept this kind of situation and then there's four different stages. So here we come close to what I'll talk about a little bit about what kind of workshops we've been doing with the cold chain operators. So I'm gonna talk more about this. Um, here's from the exhibition which was in Warsaw, Art in Post-Artistic Times. It was a project where the artists were invited, I was invited, uh, inspired by the artist placement group to put the artist within the institution and see what happens if the artist plays a more diff different role in organizing part of the exhibition. And in this case, I worked with the volunteers and the staff, education staff. And we made also kind of workshop with uh, different exercises for a few months. 
gonna run a little bit quicker. Um, this is um, this is a big archive, which is from the last uh, three four years, and. Um, it's a place where I try to explain this uh, approach to working and uh, there are some examples of, for example here, it was a call by a new institution in Torun in Poland and to make a new work for the open exhibition. And since I was coming there half a year before they opened the institution, I was able to enter into the employment uh, process of they were going to hire all kinds of staff, like cleaners, guards, uh, people in the wardrobe. And uh, so I was able to enter into that part of employing people. And since Torun is a very conservative, Catholic city, um, we managed to hire a lot of uh, single mothers, which was kind of stigmatized. And they didn't know so much that they were hired because they were single mothers. So the idea is that the work unfolds maybe without them knowing that it, they're part of a work and then during the coffee breaks and other places they would realize that there are a lot of single mothers in the working stuff. So it's the kind of work which you can explain but you can't really explain too much. So this is the dislocation of different practices. Here's a continuation of the project I mentioned earlier with the interviews with the uh, unemployed in Oslo. It was collaboration with the unemployment office. So they were coming one day and six of the people, they were coming, um, they were later traveling to Paris from Oslo for a weekend to see an exhibition where some of the images which was made relating to their conversation was shown. So the idea was to do the kind of the aesthetic reflection on the work as a paid job and uh, take notes and then give a report in the end. Okay, so these are different case studies. Um, I can talk about that if we have time later on. Um, so we return a bit to the, uh, the vaccine project. So before, um, I mentioned a little bit about the project. It was happening in four different locations. It's now being presented in Edmonton for the first time out of this context. And there is an idea to, to look at the friction or what's, what's the challenge with these kind of projects. Here I'm standing alone and um, there's a certain participatory element, there's a shared authorship, but in the end, you might question that. So what we decided to do to kind of balance for this presentation, um, to discuss it in a, in a, in a better way, uh, we thought we'll bring a sense of shared presence and uh, questioning the authorship in this project, and uh, maybe addressing some of these uh, challenges, north, south. Um, so, um, we have uh, made some pre-arrangements, so uh, we will try now to um, to prepare a situation to present this project. And I have some assistance here from uh, from Luke. Um, like to help us all bring a few more guests into the room, a few of Jesper's guests, so that we can all interact across some boundaries that we can't really in a physical way. And so maybe bringing in a few of the collaborators on the vaccine project from their homes in Burkina Faso and Mozambique, where it is very late and they've stayed up for us to potentially join us here tonight. So one by one, I'm going to call them forward and hopefully we can get their presence here. Maybe their presence will move you to talk. Maybe you will have a question from their point of view. Maybe you can be a guest or you can post them in some way. 
and help us open up this conversation a little bit. So I believe first uh, we have Isaiah Meda. We'd like to call from Burkina Faso right now. We have an anonymous guest join us on the right. I'd like to invite Bibian Esther Yamiago. Suleiman Zerbo. We call Boniface Mama. We invite Paya Blase Baze. And an anonymous guest joining us again. And now from Mozambique, I'd like to call Nelson Emilio Mote. Can we invite Manuel Josias? Americo Miguel Palucha. to invite Arcanjo Alberto Bacarici. We'd also like to invite Tendai Himo. Next guest is Manuel Salvador Moria. We can 
Nelson invites Sadate Hafarasane. Guest joining us from Mozambique, Ramos Bartolomo Jose Mabode. Hope you are able to act as gracious hosts to our, to our new guests. Thank you. And um, as Luke said, uh, let these uh, guests uh, possess you so they can get access to the discussion later on. Ask questions through you so you can speak behalf both yourself or a spirit. So be a host and be a guest. Before, before we see the, the film, which is seven minutes long and uh, now being shown at the Harcourt House, I'll just say a few words about uh, these images. Uh, so this is, it's more like that you imagine you, you go to meet, uh, in this case, Therese, in Ouagadougou, you have been emailing, but not, never talk together, and you meet and you, you enter a different kind of, uh, in this case for me, uh, being a guest and also for her being a host. So it's a totally different relationship, which is, uh, became kind of personal and uh, I was taken care of by the family. And uh, so this is just to show that there's all this side to this kind of uh, project. Here's a still from the film we will soon see, um, this from vaccination session which is also part of the project you have to do to show that you're there making a film uh, on vaccination so they understand most people the project as a journalist is here to make some journalistic we you know invite this person and accept this person to film so that's one element this was back uh, from norway where ramos was coming uh, to spend time in the conference and he's talking into a microphone. So during the project, he was giving all these kind of statements. How is it going? What's his experience? And I mean, he had been traveling uh, before, so it wasn't maybe that kind of a uh, cultural shock. But, uh, that I didn't know before. Mm -hmm. There is another example. So I just wanted to show um, how we were building up the film, because we made a series of workshops. And this is one detail from um, from uh, Lishanga in uh, Mozambique, and I'll just explain the grammar of that workshop, because it was two days, and the first day we would, uh, I explained that it will be a workshop and we'll work together, but uh, I'm seen as a consultant coming from outside, a white consultant coming to talk about health, and we'll talk about like how it works, how it can be approved. So it was a bit uh, untraditional for the workers and this, operators of the call chain so but principally what we did is what we do in art school or what many people do or what I do with students in art school if I teach or when I teach so we did this exercise so doing the same thing more or less so just to give you an understanding what's happening so we would spread out in the office and or in the outside the office and each of the participants would be given one piece of clay like a brick size of clay which we then found or I found like it so they were not prepared like what's going to happen exactly so they get the piece of clay and they lay down individually at the same time, but not looking at each other and just getting the clay on their stomach. And they have half an hour to do whatever they want with that clay. The only thing is that they should not look at it. So you have this sensation of 
maybe changing temperature in the clay, you give it a flat or a round shape, or you, there's no rules. So everybody was doing different and they didn't look so much on each other. And then we would meet, we would, when they, half an hour is finished, they would kind of put the plastic around the clay, put it aside, don't look at it, and then we would meet, and then next instruction would follow. So next instruction would be to return to your clay and look at it for the first time. So you have this visual uh, meeting with what you've been immersed in for the first time, and then as well give it a title. So you add language, so you had like this sensation and it's very clear what was it maybe for you but still on the abstract level and then you give the title after seeing it and then we come back to the table again and then you go to your neighbors and your neighbors and the neighbors and you give the title and you leave the title there and then we meet again and then you go back and you find all the titles you put them together and you make a poem right so this was like the the process of the day that you you cannot start saying well today we're going to make a perform a poem which you're going to write so it's building up layer by layer and, and creating a certain collective, uh, well, not personal and not private, but a personal experience, but a collective kind of production. So all the poems are kind of co-written together, all of them, but with kind of a personal location or belonging to one person more. So what you will see in the film is, uh, is then performing the poem. Um, so these are not poets necessarily, they are, uh, some are drivers, some are uh, more um, um, closer to the doctor, so there are different levels of expertise. But in general, they are, they are responsible for the distribution of the vaccine, so that's the team. So I'll go back and I'll play the video, it's seven minutes, and you will see the first part will be from Burkina Faso, so they are, that's uh, French, and the other will be Portuguese from Mozambique, and they're doing more or less the same exercise, you recognize the things I've been talking about. So the stills are kind of from that process. And we did then the day after, we did the more advanced um, workshop, which is not part of the film, but it's more addressing issues they really have challenges with the cold chain and with the healthcare system and with access to health, with the end user, kind of the last mile, what they call like the most difficult kind of periphery to, to reach. So then they are discussing issues also in a way which we can talk about in the end if it's interesting but a bit more advanced and a bit more confidential because they're really talking about what's going on so that's not much that's not part of this but i have some examples but not here but uh, i thought it's so i'll go back and we'll play that uh, seven minutes Vous avez ici un accumulateur de foie. Non, un icebox. Non, c'est un accumulateur de foie. En français, c'est un accumulateur de foie. Mais moi, je ne parle pas français, je ne sais pas. C'est plutôt un foyer amélioré. Non, c'est deux trous qui se regardent dont l'un dit quelque chose à l'autre. Oh là là Mais c'est un accumulateur de foie. Avec deux trous, on peut déposer deux flacons de, de vaccin pour une séance de vaccination. Il s'agit ici d'un visage humain qui traduit sa joie par des sourires. Même s'il arrive que le visage puisse traduire la peur ou le mécontentement, celui-ci se réjouit des bienfaits de la nature. Placé au milieu d'une concession du village, la cour familiale jonchée de poubelles, ne sait à quel sein se vouer. Comme une maison écroulée, le vent emporte loin les poulaillers. Un enclos protégeant les animaux 
Sous des flammes léchant les murs, s'écroule de tout son long. Quelle ruine dans un tel paysage. Tout brûle, y compris la paix, sous le joug de la démence. J'entends l'écho des pleurs, c'est la joie familiale qui s'effrite en ces moments où naît la fureur. Je ne sais plus quand naîtra la douce saveur du jour d'espoir, lorsque tout brûle et enrichit le délai. La main, toi qui m'aides dans tout ce que j'ai fait, à porter le masque sur la tête. Pourquoi tu es toujours cinq et pas plus et pas moins Parce que la main forme un ensemble indispensable dans tous les gestes. La main, toi qui ressemble à la paume du pied et conserve tout comme une caisse qui conserve l'argent, tu es formidable. Je te dis merci. Merci car sans toi la main, maman ne pourrait pas me porter au dos et elle ne m'amènerait pas à la vaccination pour que je reçoive mes doses de vaccin. Oh la main, je t'adore. Para a efetivação de uma atividade de vacinação em uma zona lacustre, precisamos de meios próprios para operacionalizar e pôr a atividade materializada. Neste caso, o barco representa o meio e os passageiros representam o pessoal técnico para a implementação de atividades de alcançar as zonas recônditas com difícil acesso para os serviços de saúde. É, vou ler também um poema aqui que fala de, da importância da geleira. Então, a geleira pode ser usada, é usada muitas das vezes para a conservação de vacinas. Então, onde é que se faz essa conservação de vacinas? Essa conservação de vacinas pode ser feita nos depósitos provinciais, pode ser feita nos depósitos distritais e pode ser feita também nas unidades sanitárias, aí onde chamamos de depósitos fixos de vacinação. Para além também de uma conservação que acontece ao nível nacional, que é ao nível do Ministério da Saúde, mas obedecendo sempre aqueles padrões que acabei aqui de mencionar, monitoria das temperaturas e sempre controlar a cada situação das relações de temperaturas, se forem muito baixas, muito altas, sempre monitorar. Tema pessoa. Está patente uma pessoa junto dos meios de trabalho. É, rodas de carro e uma sombra para o seu descanso. Encontra-se nesta neste desenho então uma pessoa reparando pneus e depois foi descansar numa sombra. O carro serve para transporte de vacinas a partir do depósito provincial, depósito distrital até a unidade sanitária. E o colmen serve para a conservação de vacina dentro com acumuladores para uma, para uma temperatura ideal a partir do depósito de provincial, depósito de distrital até a unidade sanitária. Até a conservação da vacina na geleira para com que a vacina não esteja estragada. Bacias. São materiais que nós encontramos na cozinha. Temos vários tipos de bacias. Temos bacias plásticas, temos bacias metálicas. E bacia encontramos muito na cozinha porque colocamos vários tipos de produtos. Produtos alimentares, por exemplo, vegetais, fruta. E usamos a bacia para fazer muitas coisas, mas usamos muito a bacia na cozinha. Compressor, é compressor de geleiras elétricas que, fun que funciona com energia de corrente alternada nacional e solar através de painéis solares 
e baterias para o funcionamento adequado de todas as geleiras de conservação de vacina em todas as unidades sanitárias da província. As bacias realmente que as pessoas referenciaram podem vir ser necessárias para usar de lavagem de alguns utensílios que irão nos permitir comer alguma coisa quando viemos ao serviço. Usar utensílios limpos para devidos efeitos. E as, os paus. Os paus podemos usar, sim senhor, para fazer a construção do nosso alpendre onde, onde nós deixaremos o nosso gerador. Gerador este que vai garantir a conservação das vacinas em caso de não tivermos corrente elétrica internamente. E as bolas. As bolas são necessárias para disfarçar. Não basta apenas as pessoas ficaram todo o tempo concentradas no, tra no trabalho, mas sim criar um tempo de lazer que vão usar as bolas para disfarçar e ganhar um novo dia para o início das atividades. I think I think you got the idea of the video. It's seven minutes. We missed one or two, but uh, I think it's it's difficult to play the whole thing again. So last uh, last image is uh, is this poem, which was also presented uh, in the uh, Harcourt House, and there's one. Uh, video short from the UNAIDS building in Geneva where uh, you can get the feeling of this uh, international public health uh, lobby with the exhibition we're part of and uh, the opening event. So um, she wanted to, to say something and uh, decided that the poem is a good place uh, or this opening is a good place to, to reclaim the poem like for an audience. So we'll see that it's just, uh, it's not the whole even, it's just a small part. So you see in the image, this is the first lady of Namibia. She was a guest of honor opening the exhibition. So she was being toured from one, next, one uh, part of the exhibition to the next part of the exhibition and the next part. You can imagine this kind of VIP group uh, going around. And, uh, I'll play it. To carry the mask on my head. Why are you always five, but not more or less? Because the hand constitutes an ensemble indispensable in all gestures. La main. Toi qui ressemble à la pomme des pieds et conserve tout comme une caisse conserve l'argent, tu es formidable. Je te dis merci, merci. The hand, you who look like the palm of the feet. But I think it's interesting to see how this art exhibition is made to address a very particular audience, which are professional health. Uh, decision makers so the idea also with this whole vaccine project was to have this exhibition first in Norway during the Globevac conference and then during uh, in relation to the World Health Organization conference so they could really show the importance of art artists working together uh, in dissemination challenges related to vaccines in this particular so this is this art and science. You can see that the organizers of the vaccine project really are involved in the uh, global health community. 
and testing out the effects of having a very targeted exhibition for a very targeted audience, which makes it kind of questionable, not questionable, but it, it's an interesting position to be as an artist. Because here you run in a certain system and a certain way they do it, which would be very different if you do it at the museum. So that's, uh, yeah, maybe that's a good place to to end my presentation. And then it would be great if you have some uh, questions or if somebody feels uh, spirit from our special guests, they might uh, channel that and uh, bring it forward. Okay, thank you very much.